actually, let's just start it from here if you're good with that plop, and I'm just going to chop the beginning of this whole one out. Real sorry about that, guys. But um, So welcome to Cave Conversations Live, episode four, Scuffed Edition. And no, we're not sponsored by Scuff. It's it, it's just a bad thing. <laughs> but no, uh, so we already poured our beers, but we're both drinking another half beer uh, for people hanging out out there. I uh, I have the mm, fruit uh, series, and it's the plum and cherry version. And plop over there. What does it say got, on your can? I got Mylar bags. It's other half. It's a Imperial IPA. Uh, but yeah, Ooh. just they're always very simple with their uh, their can designs. I it's love not the focus, but I love the can art because there, there's on, on all their backwards beers because it is so simple. That you can like spot them in the store anywhere because they they always That's put a little like label down at the bottom corner, yeah. Um, it's, it's so it's very noticeable, <laughs> but so I, I guess the one benefit from scuffing all this up, restarting it, how is your beer so far? <laughs> we get to really good. I actually I actually think I like this one a lot. This is probably one of my favorite other half beers. I'd have to say. Okay. And I, I think I can usually tell by the color because. This color is typically like some of my favorite IPAs. Okay, uh, okay. I don't know if there's citra hops in here. I feel like there might not be. Um, it doesn't. Don't they usually list their hops down at the bottom or no? That's what I was looking for. But yeah, there's not much on this can. Um, but if I had to guess based on the color, it probably has citra hops in it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a beer expert by any means, but. Uh, Lars could probably tell us, like off the top uh, of his head. That's that's true. That yeah, uh, uh, no, knowing Lars, Lars and Bruce, uh, <laughs> yeah. shout out, shout shout out to him. Um, yeah, Myler Bags probably, if only he was here to tell us, because I don't know. Yeah, you know what? We'll. Uh, I'm gonna have to get him on one of these episodes. One of the weeks when there's not a lot of like uh, tech news or something, and we right. can just do a lot of beer talk. We'll just bring in Lars and Bruce, and we're just gonna. Like maybe we can like co-stream it on his on his Twitch channel and really like bring the communities together because that guy is super entertaining, super good friend, um, yes, sir. and he knows his beers. So yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Um, mine so far, absolutely delicious. It's nice. <laughs> it's really easy to drink. It's a sour or a well, it's a, technically a Berliner Weiss style ale, but it's it's pretty much a sour. Um, it has the plum, the cherry, just super easy to drink. Uh, it's not too high ABV. It's it's a little up there. It's six point five percent, but not crazy. I like um, my eight point five percent one. I know yours is a yours is a bit of a heavy hitter there, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, guys, like I said, this is episode four. Our topics for the night are uh, first one we're gonna start back over on is how Twitch and esports and everything that's kind of happened over the last few years, the effects that they've had on gaming in general, how uh, people play games, how games are designed, the focus, all of that. Um, Topic two is going to be NFTs in gaming. And topic three, will PC component prices ever come back down and uh, well we'll get into that we we all hope so but i don't know we're gonna forecast it i might have some some Uh, sad forecast news but i could be wrong i could be wrong don't don't tell me mike anyway let's get right into our uh our first topic again i'm gonna let plop take it away just like i did in the the 10 minutes ago in the part of the video you guys won't see if you're watching this after the stream um (laughs) But there's yep. no such thing. It doesn't exist. What 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 doesn't exist? Uh, exactly. Huh? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> well, um so anyway, plop. What's how up? uh <laughs> how have uh you know, esports, Twitch, the streaming side of things uh, affected gaming? Well, uh as I definitely wasn't saying uh, about <laughs> 5 minutes ago or so. <laughs> um yeah, I so Twitch was well known way before back in 2009, 2010 as, you know, just in TV as I think most people know. Um, and then it was eventually sold to Amazon and like what, 2012 we were saying ish. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and 
I, you know, nobody likes Amazon owning Twitch and the way they handle things. Nobody really likes it, right? But you have to give them credit for whether they were in the right place for the right time or whether they were just able to throw all of their Amazon and Jeff Bezos money at it and help mm -hmm. it exponentially grow to what it is now. Because like it or not, Twitch is probably going to be around for a while and until YouTube finally, you know, obviously YouTube and Facebook are finally catching up. But gaming, you know, th throughout my college years in 2013 to 2018, it was there, but it was like, it wasn't well renowned, right? Yeah. As what it is now. Uh, and the main reason that is, is because COVID, man, COVID came around, just snuck around the corner, 2019, 2020, everything shut down. Nobody had anything else to do mm -hmm. except play video games. Can't go on vacation. Can't go to Europe. Can't go to Asia. Can't go to Canada. You can't go anywhere. So everyone was gaming. And what else are you going to do other than game or watch people play video games? Exactly. Right? Exactly. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch all thrived off of COVID. And obviously one one of these four things didn't make it out alive. Yeah. Uh, mixer. Really. Oh, uh, oh really right, right. Really suffered on that one. So uh, it, we... It, I uh we that was probably a better delivery last time I'm gonna be honest but Mixer um oh, man they just I think they I wish they could have survived because everything that like Shroud and Ninja talked about going over there um how when it came to like it, how they encoded video the quality of like playback everything even for even if you were a brand new streamer over on Mixer the quality was great. Some of the features were great, but they just didn't have a lot of the back-end features like Twitch had when it came to uh, the emotes and the um, interactivity with your chat. Things like that just weren't quite as good as the Twitch side. And for some reason, uh, well, not for some reason, so the discoverability over on Mixer wasn't too bad, but just getting on Mixer was annoying because to go to Mixer to watch someone at all you had to log in to your Xbox account. Oh, Not everyone has <laughs> an Xbox account, and I don't think a lot of people realize yeah. that you can just use your Microsoft login. Everyone technically has an Xbox account. Right. It's just your how you log into your computer. Your Microsoft login will work, but I'm sure people saw Xbox login, and they're like, I don't have an Xbox. Like, what? No. And they, they would just... I'm pretty sure just go away because they're like, I don't right. want to set that up right now. I already have a Twitch account, a YouTube account, a Facebook account. I can go watch people on any of those platforms and not worry about it. Why, why would I want to set up this other thing? Um, and, and I think that hurt their platform. And it was just a silly little entry window that they could have ignored. They, they could have just let you come into the site and browse and click on people. And then the, once you want to interact with the streamer, you're watching it, you're enjoying it, and once you want to interact, you go to click on the chat or something, then it says you need to be logged in to do this. I think they would have been uh, a lot more successful. And those are the same things that um, Ninja, actually, I don't know if you listened to when he was on the 100 Thieves podcast. He actually really dove into talking about all of that and like his time on Mixer and those things. And he was saying those are things, suggestions that they made, but it's so hard to get anything at a company that size to change. Right. So Mixer went by the wayside, sadly. Unfortunately, yeah. Facebook, honestly, during COVID, they probably, percentage-wise, I think they grew the most, obviously, because they weren't much beforehand, they did, yeah. but they, they grew the most because I guess people... Find it. Everybody's got a Facebook account, so I, mm -hmm. you know some people still scroll through that nowadays. It's not. It's not just boomers, I guess. I think it's and other countries. Um, could be. Yeah. I think like India. Um, I'm pretty sure is huge when it comes to Facebook gaming and mobile gaming. And but, mo mobile I mean, gaming as well. But that's there's right. actually a lot of mobile gaming streams on Facebook, and, and that's one of the big reasons. Um, I think 
the rest of Facebook gaming views are probably we're probably Z laner and toast. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Z-Laner now and bo- toast both of right. them have left it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, toast uh, is back on back on Twitch yeah, as of as of what a couple months ago, yeah, a month ago, think, not even. I think Z laner is a free agent soon here. Is he? he? Was, Got I think it. He was talking about it. He might have went back to Facebook. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think he he was debating switching once he was done. I can't I can't remember if he has or not. Yeah, but I mean, just looking at some statistics real here, I, I just thought I'd type it in on Google really quick. Um, February 24th, 2019, uh, weekly average viewers just in everything total, so flat out a, a, across Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and Facebook, mm-hmm. was about 1.7, 1.7 million compared to 2020 was 2.3 million. Then compared it to April, April 2020 to April 2019, mm-hmm. April 2019 was around 1.7. Okay. April 2020, 3.6 million wow. weekly so, average viewers across everything. So more than double. Yeah. That's a that's huge growth. Insane. Like yeah. just the amount of growth, like twofold across everything in one year. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you could look at Twitch and YouTube gaming and see Jeez. similar growth numbers, probably not quite that much because they didn't oh, yeah. have as much room to grow. For but, sure. But similar growth numbers overall. Yeah. Um, so I and I wanted you to give your thoughts on this before I got into what my real thoughts and what I was going towards on this what were, because I, I think those the growth is a great point. Um, mm-hmm. I think esports, I think streaming has had such growth in the gaming industry. It's brought so many more people into gaming, into watching games. D- to be fair, even eight years ago, I like I watched Twitch a little bit, but I would have like if someone was like, "Hey, you like want to watch this esport thing?" I'd have been like, "Esports? Like what? <laughs> why? Why would I watch that?" Right, right. And since then, over the last four and a half, five years, mm-hmm. I've become an avid watcher of Rocket League esports. Dude. Excuse me, I absolutely love watching uh, Valorant now. Championship series was just on, and that was so Valorant's much fun. Great. Watch uh, watching Ascend and Gambit in the finals. I was rooting yep. for C nine the whole way through the tournament. Everybody sadly, uh, sadly they lost. They <laughs> lost in the but playoffs, yeah. but at least they made it to playoffs. When, uh, well, we could talk about uh, Ten's team over there on uh, Sentinels. Uh, Shroud says they're breaking up. I, we'll I'm see. interested. Yeah, because so he said that before they even lost. Yeah, he said it in the opinion of that he thought they were going to win the whole thing and then break up. That's just Shroud being Shroud. Got, yeah, but then they got <laughs> taken out by Crew. Um, so right. like, oh man, it's that whole scene, like this whole scene is crazy. Like I never thought I would enjoy watching competitive video games online, but I love it. And that it, honestly, it kind of leads into what I'm talking about here in the watching gaming, especially competitive or big name streamers can change how you play games, can change your opinions on games. And it's also because of that, changing the way game developers develop games. Because when you're watching esports, you're you're seeing these insane shots in Valorant, CSGO, these insane like plays in Rocket League, these insane tactics and mind games in League of Legends, TFT. I know Plop, you can talk on that. I'm not a TFT guy, but you're like top point zero zero one percent god level. Is so I've heard something like, like that. T- what is uh, it like top five hundred now? I'm Diamond One forty LP right now, so almost Masters, which is okay. like it's di- above me is Masters, Grandmasters, and Challenger. Okay. Um. So I'm. I, I think I'm like the top. 0.06 or 0.6 percent right now or something i think Damn. it's 0.6 yeah that's i mean that's legit that's really good so get getting there but I, I, tfts it's it's more rng related so i don't think it'll ever be too competitive in the future okay. but I, it's a good game i like it. it 
it, it presses on my brain and, uh, and stuff. So yeah, it's not, I don't have to be up and sweaty like Valorant. I can just be kind of relaxed and, yeah, it's and awesome. just use my noggin to, I was going to say it is what it, it's referred to as like, it's, it's an auto chess game. Yes. And, auto chess and yeah, there. Yep. you get to just, like you said, you get to just play mind games. You get to flex your brain and relax your body. Uh-huh. Yeah. But what I'm leading into with all of this competitiveness is now people pick up a game and the most played games a lot of them now are the the free to play titles or mm-hmm. the esports titles and everyone wants to be that next shroud the next tens oh yeah the next squishy in rocket league um i don't know league of legends players but the next league of legends player the next zero smash brothers player like um, League of Legends would be Bjergsen, okay. uh, Faker, Faker, Faker. Yeah, um, I should have known Faker. Uh, just to name a few, but um, there's plenty out there. It was like Moo Cow, something that used to be someone. I know Bernie told me about him because Bernie used oh, to maybe. be in League. Bernie used to be top 1,000 back when he was, was in he? college. He was Dang. one of those people who was smart enough that he just didn't go to any college classes and passed. He just <laughs> would show up on test days and. He played so much League on his old laptop that he melted the bottom feet of the rubber feet on the laptop. He had an old Dell XPS with, like, a GT650 or something in it. So did they not have those fan things you could put under them? Oh, he he uh, just didn't have one. Gotcha. So it, so it <laughs> melted the bottom feet. Oh, my God. And it also, like, was, like, burning the top of his desk. So he started oh, playing, no. like, next to the window in the winter. To keep what? his laptop cool, because <laughs> he would play like fifteen hours a day and just grind, like a madman. What? But but that Jeez, that's leading dude. into exactly what oh, I'm yeah. talking about is how people play games differently now. Everyone wants to get good. People aren't just like logging on like <clears throat> we used to with Halo Two, Halo Three, MW One and Two. Um, people would log in for those quick like. Just jump on with your friends on Xbox Live or uh, TeamSpeak, and you just get into some oh, quick God, games speak. and have a good time. Maybe create some maps, and you get in there in proximity chat, talk some crap. But all it was all, all casual play. It's casual. It was good fun. It and was for fun. I think a lot of that has been lost in gaming in general because now everyone logs on and they're trying to to learn the new meta. And get good, and and some of that is esports. Watching, you know, the pros do it, but then you also go on, you watch the streamers, and even the top streamers like Doc, Tim, um, any of those guys. Even though they are just there to have, you know, have fun in the game is what they're they're trying to do. They're also trying to be very good at the game, and they do try and follow the the metas. And they, they bring them to light. All A lot of streamers, everyone streaming, wants to follow whatever the, the meta is at that time to, to be good or to be part of, I guess, the in-crowd in gaming. Um, Mike, it's, it's something I like to refer to as sweaty tryhards. Yeah, exactly. Everyone <laughs> wants to be a sweaty tryhard. And I, I'm, like, for a while, no exception in Rocket League. Uh, lately, yeah. I play... Mostly casual because I don't spend as much time playing as I used to. So when I jump on, I don't want to deal with the toxicity. I don't want to deal with the grind. I just want to go on, have fun playing a few games. So I've kind of just been at the same like rank the last few seasons. Yeah. Except when I go play unranked, my MMR is crazy high. I'm getting like matched up with high GCs and SSLs now. Uh, but if I go into regular <laughs> ranked, I'm in like low champ because. I don't want that grind. I don't want the toxicity. Because sweaty tryhards, Mike. Because no, sweaty tryhards. That's exactly it. And I think it's yeah. gotten that way across gaming where everyone wants to be a sweaty tryhard because they could yeah. go pro. I mean, I mean, sweat. yeah, I mean, I, so I never played a good example. I've never played it. I, I get, okay, I've played it like once or twice, but Fortnite, right? Perfect really, example. really good example. 
when it first came out, everybody's like, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew how to build, right? So you just exactly. go up and you'd shoot somebody and be, it'd be like a gun battle, you know? It'd be mm -hmm. like Call of Duty, you just shoot at each other. Two year, two, three, four years later, you shoot at somebody and they're instantly 200 feet in the air. It's yeah. like, how are these people building so fast? Dude, like, it's nuts. I had fun the first year Fortnite was out, and I didn't play it much, but I hopped in with friends, and it was that fun, casual experience of running around yeah. in a party with friends. Oh, yeah. No one knew what was happening. You see yep. another team. You all shoot at each other. It was a good time. Now, yeah, you're right. You can't hop into a Fortnite match casually. Bloody try -arts. Because you're going to run into someone who can yeah. build a freaking skyscraper in two seconds, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, what do I hit to make a wall? Oh, sh yeah. shit, I'm dead. Yeah. And it's it's that way across all of these games. I mean, Warzone too, and uh, you know, like I keep, I feel like I keep bringing up Doc, but it's part of the reason that, like I, I watch him, I throw him and Tim on. They they entertain me in the background. Nineteen ninety four, nineteen ninety five, two time champion. Yeah, back to back blockbuster back to back. <laughs> gaming yeah, blockbuster champion. Blockbuster gaming, six foot eight, <laughs> thirty seven inch vertical leap. <laughs> <laughs> thirty seven inch. But um, oh god. Yeah. yeah, he he like him and uh him and like Tim always refer to the the sweaty tryhards the the in Warzone they're the slide cancelers like they'll be like oh we got a slide right. canceler over here let's get out of here let's get out of here yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, and it's it's true like you see someone just slide canceling across the freaking ground in front of you like to a buy station and turn mm -hmm. on you headshot you inst insta headshot you you're like uh, I saw them first then I didn't even have time to aim at them like they're what and in warzone when it was new again i had that same thing where i loved getting in there with my friends and running around the map battle right. royale like seeing yeah. another team it's fun but i just don't have the time and don't want to get that good i don't want to do i don't want to train in on whatever is meta the slide canceling i don't want yeah. to know oh, sure. every weapon and every attachment that's currently good in the game currently has the best buffs i don't want to keep up with what's getting nerfed and whatnot i just want to be able to log on with friends and have a good time and there aren't many at least online experience games like that anymore um mm -hmm. i think halo excuse me even though there's the the ranked in halo is amazing feeling i enjoy it i'm not going to grind to be amazing at it but i do enjoy it but having like big team battle and fiesta mode and stuff, that is one of those games right now where you can jump in with friends and just have a, a leisurely yeah. good oh, yeah. time. It's like it's like the the old battlefield games, the battlefield oh, bad yeah. company, and you Dude, just hop in there, man. You'd get in a jet fighter and or a tank, and you just roll right across and just start blowing up people. Like mm -hmm. it was just it was just pure fun and enjoyment, and you just do it casually with friends and. That would be that. Like nobody exactly. thought about. Oh, gotta be the best. I gotta yeah. be the very best. You know, like. <laughs> well, and that's and like like we're saying that's that's why I wanted to bring this topic up, and, and part of the inspiration for it this week, guys, was so Doc tried to make the argument on his stream about how esports have hurt the way games are developed, and when he was doing that, I was thinking the the same time. Twitch streamers like him have had just as much of an effect on it as you know, once again, I want to turn down. I forgot my phone volume was on. I have to have at least have it on vibrate, guys. I'm on I'm on call, so just in case. But um, how Twitch streamers have had just as much of an effect on how people play games and how games are developed. How Doc and Tim and Nick and everyone before Halo Infinite multiplayer came out, they're like, dude, it needs a battle royale. It's gonna fail if it doesn't have a battle royale. They're all still playing it. They all love yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a big thing for Halo, and I, I'm down with it. Like maybe mm -hmm. a year down the line, but I think they just need to focus on what they're known for. Exactly. And that that is just being a good arena style multiplayer shooter, and that's that. Yep. Like I'm not against and, it, but I agree. Focus on what they're good at first. Get your player base that wants that. That is because that's the player base that's going to keep that game alive. The BR player base isn't going to keep that game alive. It's the true Halo fans that'll keep that game alive. Right. Get Forge in there because everyone wants Forge. And oh, then yeah. I, maybe I, worry about I, a battle royale. 
I mean, you and I both know once Forge is released that somebody's just going to create a battle royale mode in Forge anyway. Yep. So it's going to be out prior to like just in a casual setting mm-hmm. uh, format. Like somebody's just going to start up a, a mode and then 160 to 100 people are going to join and that's going to be the battle royale for the time being until <laughs> they potentially release one in the future. But well, that, that's just the way it is. And I, I arguably, I think Halo... You know, release. They did it right with not only the surprise release on what Microsoft's twentieth birth or twentieth anniversary. Yep, twentieth anniversary. Which is so also they Halos. they told so they told everybody it would be released later. Then surprise, it's out like three weeks earlier. Yeah, and and not only that, but they released it when it was ready. Like mm-hmm. it felt good. I uh, I can't speak much for Battlefield, but from what I've heard, it kind of had a Rough, rough release loss. yeah i i know and, they still have people who are happy and enjoying battlefield right but it had a rough launch and it still is missing a ton of features so i i think i think arguably halo you know released the best out of the three shooters you know so mm-hmm. and i think they're already taking advantage of their presence by already doing these huge esports events for you know these these halo events and already getting more eyes on it and I think oh, if yeah. you have uh, Valorant be told, if you have a good esports scene, that'll bring a lot more people to play the game. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's just it, you know? We, people are still playing CSGO to this day because the esports scene is still insane on that game. Without but, a doubt. And that's the other side of the coin. I was listing off a bunch of the negative ways that streaming and uh, esports have affected gaming. I think yeah. there's a hundred times more positive ways they've affected gaming. I think that's just the one big negative one is the sweaty tryhardness of gaming yeah. now. Uh, less people are just casually enjoying online games with their friends and they're just tryharding. But exactly what you were just saying is the rise of esports, the rise of streaming, all of that has just brought so many more people into gaming and keeps them in gaming, keeps these these games living forever that uh, necessarily wouldn't have if they came out 10 years ago. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the live experiences and stuff like Fortnite constantly changing. Mm-hmm. It, I don't I don't know how those games would have been before, how that game would have been before, like, social media. I don't think it yeah. would have ever been noticed. Probably not. <laughs> so so the, the effects have been crazy, but I don't know if you want to add anything else to that or if uh, you want to jump into topic two. I mean, I could keep going forever. <laughs> oh, but, I could too. But for the sake of the video, let's, let's move on to our next topic. Okay, okay. So, guys, topic two tonight is NFTs in gaming. And I have a couple things where there's, – there's a few things where I'm okay with it. But overall – I think along with most people, it's a scary thing to see um, start to happen. And I don't know if, Plop, if you saw Ubisoft's announcement last week, Mm -hmm. uh, Ubisoft Quartz, where they're going to start adding. um, The first game it's going into is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. They're going to start adding cosmetics into the game that you can purchase that will be uh, minted. So they'll have like an... Uh, they will be an NFT. They'll have a unique identification number. The, the, there's not another one like it. Um, that item is yours. It might have the number printed right on it. And I feel like it's an excuse to charge even more for cosmetics. Simple cosmetics that you could maybe already a few years ago, especially in a game like that, that's sixty dollars. Right. Simple cosmetics that should should have or would have been unlockable in a game five to ten years ago, that now you already charge players for, and now you're gonna charge even more because they could have this unique code, and you're the only one that has it with that code, and they'll even have sometimes the number printed on it. I made some jokes about like. Oh Jesus! Like the the ones that have like four twenty or sixty nine on them are gonna just go <laughs> are gonna for go for a lot of money. amounts of money yep. because people want to. I can see it. 
But it's going to be the first one, the last one, and then 420 and 69. Yeah, yep. And, and it's... it. I'm not for it because I think these big companies like this are going to take a huge advantage of it. There are a few ways. There, there's, I guess, very small ways that I am for it, but I want to get some of your thoughts on it first and then come back with that. I mean, so so here's my thoughts, right? I think Web3 NFT, you know, not to go too in detail is... You know, it's definitely going to be some sort of thin, right? Like, oh, yeah, everybody, everybody is already experienced experimenting with it. The one thing I do agree with is uh, blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is actually really good and solves really good problems that make it more efficient to do something or or better to do it a certain way. However, you may put it. I think that part is good. The blockchain. Good. Everything else is kind of like it's, you know, obviously it's too early to tell, right? Yeah. And, definitely. and I get that these companies don't want to miss out, right? They want to get in early if they can uh, to try to, you know, if it does become mm -hmm. mainstream in one to five years, if, you know, they don't want to miss out on that early, oh, we could have made NFTs and had a unique code. Like, exactly. so I get, I get that they're experimenting with it, but I know a lot of gaming, like gaming is just, it's, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Like you already have, like you, you buy something, a skin in League of legends and you own it. Like that was already a thing. I get that these like, like artists are making NFTs and then, then they become available or there are artists are making these NFTs and then, and then you buy them and it's mm -hmm. like a digital code for it. That's yeah. different because you're turning something physical to something digital. Right. Um, obviously, you know, I could go more and without going too much into the crypto NFT gaming space and blockchain environment. I think some companies are just trying to get in early and I'm not sure I totally agree with it. Right. Um, They're just trying to take advantage of the new thing. But, but it's the new fab, you know. Yeah. Your friend across the street is doing it. You got to take a look at it. Like, exactly. It's just the thing. And I just to add on, I think some other companies uh, got in. I kind of was doing a little research as well. Mm -hmm. uh, f as far as I know, at least according to this, this, uh, this askwonder.com, um, six gaming companies have experimented with non fungible tokens, including. Uh, I don't even know who Anim Animoca Brands is. I have no clue uh, who that is. Not sure. Um, Atari, Capcom, mm -hmm. uh, Square Enix, um, and then Bandai Namco. I don't. Bandai I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Do, so I, actually, I, most I'm not of those, too familiar with that. Maybe all of those are Japanese companies, which is interesting. Are, yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but I know EA Games. Um, they the president and, right obviously of EA, EA and came then. out and said that they believe NFTs are the future. Uh, in gaming, and obviously that they came out with that headline talking about how they're they're looking at working them into FIFA, which no surprise there that is their cash cow. Um, then of there course. was the Ubisoft yeah. announcement. Now there's Stalker, uh, the the company behind Stalker Two, came out and said that they're gonna have like an NFT raffle essentially in the game that people can trade these codes back and forth pay for them real money all of that and eventually down the line certain certain uh, of these codes uh you could you could win and become an npc in the game it's some weird like the weird way they're doing is like if you have a certain code huh. you can become an npc in the game and like you your human self they'll make you into an npc and it's just such a weird Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's I, interesting. I, yeah. I, th I think it's still early to tell. Um, I think, I think just all these companies are just trying to hop on board. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily agree with NFTs and the way they're made currently because it uses yeah. a lot of, you know, fossil fuel power to do it all. Obviously, it needs to be powered somehow. Right. And they're using 3080s, and I don't feel good about that. Like, yeah. Uh, to put it onto the blockchain and encode it, and it requires a lot of power, and we don't. Yeah, we, we don't. But that you know, like I said, that's that's kind of a different story. I'm trying to stay gaming related <laughs> a bit here, but 
We'll, we'll, but yeah, uh, I don't Chim- know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. I want to address Chim in chat. And actually, because I missed which company, was it Ubisoft that decided they weren't going to follow through with it? Or was it... Oh, after people freaked? Yeah, or was it the oh, company no. um, that's doing Stalker 2? Because I just saw you say that in chat, and I must have I must have missed the update uh, today then on that one. So, I don't know if you... Are you looking it up already, Plop? I'm trying to. Okay. Looks like it looks like he's referring to a stalker too. Official okay. count doubled down on using NFTs then ten minutes then minutes later deleted the tweet. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, then they must be walking back on it. That uh, well, a lot of people yeah, blew up on it. Especially yeah. because I got a lot of backlash, I guess. Well, and especially because Phil Spencer in an interview just recently, um discussed how he doesn't want to see NFTs in gaming. And then they come out and have this game that's coming to Game Pass day one when it releases. You know, it's a big Xbox, Microsoft-backed title saying they're going to be using NFTs in-game, and I, I think that stirred up a lot uh, on Twitter, especially Reddit. Yeah, it's that's nuts. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, apparently they posted their thing regard. they had made the NFT announcement, and then they posted something saying, hey, here's a more detailed thing on yesterday's announcement of NFT bonuses for Stalker 2. So they doubled down on it, and they yep. said, this is going to be huge. Like, And I saw uh, that, so I must have just barely missed the right, whole thing well, of them deleting the, it. Apparently, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm using Twitter as my resource, and it looks mm-hmm. like everybody, like a couple, a couple hours ago, literally, they said, yeah, they backtracked, and they deleted <laughs> their doubled down post, and oh, now man. it's... Now it's done. So that's amazing. Wow. I, I mean, I, I, yeah. So that's that's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think it, gaming. It's it's kind of like you're already selling stuff. Like, yeah. Now you're just gonna try to. It, it feels bad, right? It feels bad for the user end. Well, uh, it, it, it feels more bad, especially in a full price game. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the one place. I'm going to get a little weird with it, and it ties back into uh, our first talk a little bit with, like, the eSports talk and the streamer talk and all of that stuff. And to go along with all of these free-to-play experiences, and I think of one that jumps out to me, uh, a couple that jump out to me big time, especially because I play them, Rocket League and Valorant, but Mm -hmm. CSGO. um, I don't know how cosmetics work in League and if they're tradable or anything. Um, But... Any of the games where these cosmetics are, are tradable um, and the free-to-play games and stuff, if you could get, like, say, say the game does a, a collaboration with a streamer, big-name streamer, a big-name pro, mm-hmm. say, like, Shroud. Let's just bring him up because he, he is big. He, of course. He plays, a lot of these, he plays a lot of these games, like, I think of Valorant and CSGO. If he was able to, via, like, Riot came to him, and they're like, okay, we're going to have this item, and it's a Shroud NFT item, essentially. Like, like this is the specific item code. Shroud right. used it on this specific, like, stream he did, did all this stuff, and then Shroud gets to give it away on stream. That that's a cool like that would be yeah, pretty cool. That's, that's like I that's think that's different. Like going to say you go to like a baseball game and your favorite yeah. player signs the ball, right? That's that is unique. Precisely, it's like that. a pro yeah. or a streamer could essentially sign your item. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool, and yeah. that is a place where I could see NFTs coming into play. That is less harmful, especially in these free to play experiences. In these free to play experiences. And I don't want to get into it too much because I, I think <laughs> some of them are going overboard with the prices of their oh, cosmetics yeah. by far. I like mean, $20 for, sure. for a freaking skin is stupid. Yep. But I am more willing to pay for, like, the battle passes or whatever um, little, like, thing that's going to last four months and it's $10. If the game is free to play and I'm going to play it enough to work my th- way through this pass, yeah, right. I'm getting $10 of enjoyment out of it. I'm okay with throwing $10 at that developer to make the game better and make my experience like I have achievements to essentially go for. And, and yeah, and to support the company, right? I right. mean, 
Yeah, sure, you're supporting Riot Games, which is a billion dollar <laughs> company, but right. I mean, if they did a great job on Valorant and you got it for free, sure, like it, ten dollars yeah. doesn't feel that bad. And over the course of a couple of years, maybe that equivalates to like a full game of sixty dollar price, and you went through six seasons and got all these skins, and you played all the time. Right. That's... I have no problem supporting them in that way. What's so. scaring me is like some of these bigger companies, like we said, Ubisoft right at the beginning, is they want to add these to a sixty dollar game. Yeah, and that's that is wrong because you've already paid for the full experience mm. in that game. Mm. And now mm. want, yeah, yeah. Now they want to yeah. add. It. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's still too early to tell, but it is. We'll yeah. see. We'll see where it goes from here. Uh, I mean, if people are getting all this backlash, I doubt it'll stay very relevant. Early term, it Early might term. be some, it might be something road. more long term. I think down the road, it is. It's we'll probably see. an inevitable thing, but oh yeah, hopefully it's not in a terrible way. And uh, with with we that, shall see. With that, talking about terrible things costing lots of money. <laughs> oh, who here has tried to buy any PC parts? In good the last segue. two years. Wow, that was that was a really good segue, Mike. Not gonna lie. Well, well, Speaking you, of terrible you. things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're expensive. Oh, man. everybody knows it who's been trying to buy. I mean, I, I, honestly, it's anything. It's not just PC parts. It's consoles. You, if you can even get your hands on them, um, it's freaking wood. If you're trying to build something for your house, it's expensive and hard to get. So, mm-hmm. cars, expensive, hard to get. Everything right now, expensive and hard to get. But especially with this channel being tech focused, PC parts, graphics cards, specifically now DDR5 RAM and the new Intel Alder Lake chips, they've been a terrible experience to try and get your hands on. Whether you are going on the used market, the new market, if you can get one on the new market via like New Egg Shuffle or just get lucky and wait in line overnight at Best Buy. Yeah. It's a nightmare, and the prices have not been going down. If anything, they just kind of keep slowly creeping Covering. up, and almost yeah. it, it seems like it's even after all this is said and done, we're going to have some new norms on pricing, and that's oh, yeah. a little bit scary. But I want to kind of talk about now where we think um, the pricing is going to be going over – the next year, you know, going into 2022 and stuff. And I think I'm going to lead into this plop. It looks like you have a thought. So I'm going to let you, you throw your I thought I do have there. a, th- just to break it up a little bit. So, cause I know you're going to go into this. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I just lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? Um, I can't even remember I mean, what I was going to say. You I totally to lost my train. Uh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I have been trying to build a computer, but obviously I have not been able to get my my hand, my dirty little hands on a little a little 3070 or 3080 or anything that can come my way. So unfortunately, I'm I'm still waiting on that. But okay, it came back to me. It came back to me. Okay, okay. The one so a funny thing, I don't know if you remember an article uh so Nvidia I think back in 20 what was it 2018 or 2017 Mm -hmm. with one of their series they released in the fall they had they had produced too many of them in their factory and the prices dropped like insane insane like months after they had released their new series whatever it was that year like maybe it was like way back in 2016 so they came out in, in in public and they said hey by the way we're not gonna put this into fast production mode. We could potentially produce way more of these, but we're not going to because we want to keep the prices stable and we don't want them to crash. Mm-hmm. Which is like a yeah, it's I I, yeah. I, I don't really agree with Wait, that so as a w- user trying saying, to get a 3080. This was this, this was, was a while a ago. Fall or was it like this? Like this a was year like a couple ago. months ago. Like this what? was like a couple months ago. Yeah. Okay, because I, I know I they had... just they actually just brought the 2060 back, and that might be what you're talking right. about. Right, maybe, so maybe that's what I'm referring to. They just brought the 2060 back, and that's actually one of the articles I have linked here, um, or I had it linked last week. Actually, it was in the discussion last week. 
is the RTX 2060, which is a card that launched two and a half years ago now, was it had six gigs of GDDR5 RAM on it. Or was it was that when six was introduced? It might have been GDDR6. But it was a really solid mid-tier card that sold for about 250 to 350 depending on where you were getting it, um, sales, all of that. I think the MSRP of that card was 299 And they just, two and a half years later, they have a 12-gigabyte version of that card they're bringing back to the market because they had so many of these dies left over that they can actually bring the card back. So this is probably what you're, what you're talking about, Plop. Um, it's performing somewhere between a base 2060 from back then and a 2060 Super, which came out a little bit later and had 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but it had a much um, better bus so that there was a, there was a lot more bandwidth. Um, right. So it was faster performing RAM. It, it communicated faster essentially with the chip. Um, so even though this one, the new card here has more VRAM, it performs lower than that super version. So it's somewhere in the middle there. MSRP, two and a half years ago, 299 This card at launch was listed for over anywhere that was in stock, was, which was almost nowhere. But it was mm-hmm. going for over $550. Almost double the price two Jeez, and a half man. years later for anyone who could get their hands on it. I bet if you went on right. eBay right now, though, if you could find any of them on there, it's probably going for like $800. So that's the state of things. Uh, <laughs> old things right now. Even a twenty six, so or a 1060. The card you, you run right now, you have a 1063 gig. And that card knew... In 2017, 2018, would have been about 180 to 220. That would, so this was before the 2000 series at all. So sounds about right. Yep. And right now, you can't find that card for less than $250 in the used market. It's crazy. Jeez. That, so what? A, a card that's over five years old, you can't find for... It's original MSRP on the right. used market. That's oh the state of things God. right now. It's and it hasn't. It doesn't seem to. We don't see a light at the end of the tunnel yet. Every once in a while, there's like a glimmer of hope. We're like, oh, th- this could turn things around. Um, especially like if Bitcoin takes a huge hit one day. We're like, right. ooh, maybe some miners are gonna be like, mm, gotta offload these cards. Like this isn't working out. There's an end here. Uh, we're, we're already at 19 <laughs> coins minted and there are 19 million coins minted and the t- it's supposed to top out at 21 million and blah, 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 blah. There's an end in sight, but then there's all of these other, like there's Ethereum and everything else. And between silicon shortage, miners, um, and just the absolute like demand for all of, all of the gamers, no one can get their hands on them. And sadly, yeah. for, for our group, the, the gamers are the ones who lose the most because everyone else is botting the cards and scalping them or the, the huge mining facilities that are running, you know, a thousand cards are just going straight to the middleman before the cards even make it to market and saying, hey, for sure. hey we'll, we'll pay you double for a thousand graphics cards. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, they're gonna yeah, make a lot their of, way back. So I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of those computer companies that you know pre-build PCs too are mm-hmm. you know beating everybody to the punch as well because they buy them in bulk and they buy you know a couple hundred at a time, and yep. they're they're gonna get their money's worth. They're gonna sell you know pre-built PCs for well more than what they're buying the GPUs for. So, exactly, I mean, and so, but, so so razors. CEO came out and talked about not just GPU prices, but laptop and uh, just computers in general and said Mm. there will be a price increase heading into 2022. Yeah. And it's like, wait, what? We're already through the roof. It's going to go up more. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. 
at least on like, yeah. like laptops, specialty build type stuff, mm-hmm. there's going to be more of an increase. And it's it's the trickle down effect that's still happening from the shortages. It's it's supply and demand, and the demand has not diminished. If anything, it's only gotten stronger, and the supply cannot catch up. It hasn't even, it, it, and they've made some huge efforts. Like supply is probably close. To to back to where it was before the pandemic in, in some of these places. But the demand at this point has gotten so much higher across all avenues that want these products that the market cannot catch back up and prices are just going to keep going up until that can level out. And once it levels out, I don't think it's going to come all the way back down to what it used to be. It's going to fall somewhere in the middle, um, which is... A scary thought, because where is that middle going to be after all of this? Yeah, I mean, to think again, too, that, you know, obviously there's another COVID variant amongst us. Mm-hmm. And a whole, God forbid that shuts down more stuff and in return causes an even bigger shortage. Who right. knows? But hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, f- fingers crossed. But it's it's mm-hmm. a possibility. and. Uh, it's it's tough man it's tough it's, it's all it's it's scary stuff to think about um i mean covid in general is scary to think about because you don't want to you don't obviously want to put prices production the economy all that stuff it, it like versus human life um there's such a, a weird balance in talking about all of that but i don't want to get too much into that specifically we we just want to i guess Moral or, or goal of, of this conversation is how or when will we see these changes? And, yeah, I think it's going to be not until well after this pandemic's over. Might as well just wait for a 4,000 series at this point, well, but I doubt when, I'll get my hands on one of those. So Right. It, like, when is that going to happen? And, honestly, at this rate, maybe the 4,000 series will be what gets you a 3,000 series card when all the miners want to upgrade. Could be. Right. Um, the one yeah. positive thing in all of this is, according to uh, Tom's Hardware, an article, they say they're a little skeptical on this, but, but there's been a bunch of companies coming out and saying that DDR5 prices should be dropping and DDR5 RAM should be becoming um, more easily... Uh, I guess, found, obtained in Q1 of 2022. So, excuse me. Anyone who is on Intel Alder Lake, that new platform with the new motherboards, uh, the any of the Z690 boards, anyone who is looking forward to Ryzen 6000 and the new um, chipset and motherboards that are going to come along with that and use DDR5. I guess this is good news. If DDR5 is more easily um, found, more easy to come by, I guess, and getting cheaper because they're catching up, mm-hmm. the production lines, we're able to just keep right on moving with that. That'll be great. Um, always want to see that type of stuff move forward. It seems like there isn't a huge issue for people when it comes to getting new CPUs because like CPUs aren't really affected by the mining thing. Um, as yeah. much as GPUs, and I know I can go on the the Intel Alder Lake stuff is sometimes in and out, but that's brand new. The if you want a Ryzen chip like uh, 5700X, 5800X, Ryzen, even the 5900s, you can find you can find yeah, all can, of them. You can get any of them. Uh, not, uh, Intel 11th Gen same way. Not only th- can you find them, but you can find them below MSRP. Yeah, they're on sale. Um, Isn't both, that crazy? Both Intel 11th Gen and <laughs> Ryzen 5000. Uh, you, I mean, I'm assuming I'm assuming right they now. don't run. I'm assuming they don't run on the same chip that the chip shortage is causing, or is it just not? Well, that no, much no, no. In so demand? it's not. When when people say chip shortage, it's silicon shortage. It's it's the precious metals that are used to make these computer chips um, of all kinds. Whether it's you know something you're throwing in uh, an automobile, something you're throwing in a GPU, CPU, right. all of that. It's just that. There hasn't been an urgency to upgrade CPUs right now, and I think a lot of that is because Ryzen 3000 and Intel 10th Gen did so well before the pandemic that everyone has already upgraded. Those were perfect upgrade paths because the last big CPU upgrade would have either been the 4000 or 6000 series of Intel chips 
So the it's not bottlenecking your PC or the 6700 or the 7700K um, chips on Intel. So I think a lot of people, like you were saying, yeah, so it's not bottlenecking stuff, but a lot of people made that jump, made that upgrade before any of this pandemic stuff happened, any of these shortages started to happen. So people aren't as antsy to upgrade uh, a CPU currently. Um, so I think that's why we're seeing that. It's, it's the CPUs have kept that clean um, cycle of upgrades going where, yeah, people want to upgrade it, but it's not everybody and their brother trying to do it on the, right. the same day. Yeah, so hopefully this passes by soon, but at the time, I think the next three to six months is not going to be looking great. No, I don't. I think it's going to be rough still for for quite a while here. But I would love to tell anyone watching that come Q three Q four of twenty twenty two, you'll be able to walk into Best Buy or you know Micro Center or anywhere and pick up one of the new consoles, or t I say new, they're over a year old now, but one of the no, consoles. No. <laughs> one, one, a, a, a new GPU, you know, some DDR5 RAM, any of that stuff, and just go on your way and build a PC, play some games, do whatever you want to do. Um, and I do think the console thing on that side, I, I think that's going to level out, but PC hardware is, especially GPUs, I think it's going to be another year. Another yeah. year, just rinse and repeat like the last two have uh, been. It we'll sucks. see. We'll see. I yeah. mean, that's what happens when COVID, you know, obviously increases demand for PCs and the chip shortage for, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's using cars or it's, yeah, everything. It's been a perfect and, storm for yeah. for this whole industry. So it's, it's tough. I do need not to, great. I do. I also need to buy a new car, and it's it's in that. Yeah, being used a tough market. Spot. Used market price isn't very good. No, used market price. It is, is if you're trying to sell. Yeah, used market prices for cars, same boat. Yep. Freaking used cars are yeah. going more for more money. Like you can go look at a 2018, 2019, with fifty thousand miles on it, and it's going for more than the new version of the car. But you can't get the new version of the car. So, well, shit. Yep. Need more U.S. Uh, production? Supply, some lot, well, supply and demand, baby. Chim, I, I know there are... Uh, Samsung's opening a new factory in Texas, I believe. Oh, nice. So I, I think we're going to be getting some more of that U.S. production. So they're, Hopefully. Yeah, they're opening a, a new chip company. Um, that'd, be, that'd be great. So we'll see. We'll see if that comes to fruition. Good for them. And uh, I don't know if... Let's see. We have some smaller topics we could hit on real quick. And then if uh, I don't know if there's anyone in chat that has some questions or even if you guys, I, I usually at the beginning of the show, we had a little, little scuffed beginning, but uh, if you guys are drinking anything tonight along with us, let us know in chat. I always love seeing what like everyone's, you know, if someone's just sitting back enjoying a beverage or something. Uh, love seeing what they're drinking and uh, we'll get into some of the smaller topics, but then also if there's like any Q and A stuff people want to talk about or like talk about a game you're playing or something. Go ahead and throw it in chat now, and we'll get to it after some of these uh, smaller topics. But uh, just a quick one I wanted to bring up. I saw this the last couple of days. Um, there's been some stink made about yeah. it, but HDMI 2.1. And I don't know if you've really heard about this or read about it too much plot. But So HDMI 2.1 is it's the, what the new standard was for, you know, it, it meant if you had something that said HDMI 2.1, at least is what we thought, you could do. 4K 120, or 8K, or 4K 144. It should have been, I think, up to 4K 240 is maybe the max. I'm not sure with the full spec. But TVs with it were 4K 120, 8K 60. Um, pretty basic stuff. Monitors with it could do a little bit more. All of the uh, 3000 series GPUs and the 6000 series um, AMD GPUs have... Um, these 2.1 ports on them along with DisplayPort. And actually the new GPU I just put in my computer has two HDMI ports, two Display ports. So I actually had to use one of the HDMI 2.1 ports for one of my monitors. But, um, Ooh, fancy. So there's TVs and monitors coming out now, now though, that say 2.1, but they can't do any more than 4K 60. 
Ah, and so they're like, just they're, they're doing the classic yeah, throw it on the label, just smack it on there, and that's that. So so people so so companies have gone to um, the HDMI the the company that does the official official HDMI licensing, and what they're saying is that HDMI 2.0 doesn't exist anymore. They're done with it. They don't want anything to have it on it. So. They're making different levels of the HDMI 2.1 protocol. It just has to meet this certain thing, and you can put it. it you can put HDMI 2.1 on there now, and that there's different oh? spec levels. Well, the thing is, none of these companies with these TVs and monitors are gonna list the official like what specs my HDMI 2.1 can handle because that's it's stupid. Like you come out with a a protocol, a new number, because it makes an advancement. Why would you retire HDMI 2.0 and just move the specs up to HDMI 2.1 and be like, well, HDMI 2.1 could be this or this? Who knows? Figure it out. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not a, t I'm a, you know, I don't believe in 4K just yet. I, yeah. I know it. I know it's very obviously the jump from 1080p or 720 to 1080p is huge, and then from 1080p to the 2k is also pretty significant but that mm -hmm. jump from 2k to 4k is like like very minuscule so it's like you know it's not that big of a deal but I, the difference between 120 and 60 between 2 and 2.1 is that what you said yeah yeah and so that's that's uh, at that's the 4k big. level um and where actually you're seeing this um is with the new consoles the ps5 right. and the xbox series x are both capable of 4K 120 FPS over the HDMI 2.1 protocol. So there's a, a a handful of new TVs that came out over the last year, right? With HDMI 2.1 ports, and one of the things like my LG has a little game controller next to the 2.1 port. Like this is the one you plug your gaming machine into, right? Because right, it's right. it's the best port. Um, oh yeah. And yeah, my my LG upstairs, uh, I have my Series X plugged into it. And it can run, like Rocket League, it runs at 4K, well, not quite 4K, it upscales it, but 4K 120, essentially. Mm -hmm. There are, like Halo, Halo 4K 120. Sure, um, it looks gorgeous on there. Yeah, it, so it, it can do that. But yeah. now you have TV manufacturers, some of the, 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 one of the ones that was called out was one of the cheaper Chinese brands putting the label of 2.1 on there but it's not 2.1 it's actually worse than 2.0 <laughs> but they can put the label on there hdmi is letting them do that because they're like well we want to retire the naming scheme off of our old old protocol like our old right. licensing no that's stupid like you n now you're putting these things like it, in the consumer's lap without giving them enough information you have consoles coming out and saying you need something with the hdmi 2.1 port and you go you buy a tv is it most a lot, especially, I don't want to like section out console gamers, but I'm gonna say if someone got the new console last year, and say it's like like 14, 15 year old kid, and they're just like they're begging their parents, like parents are gonna get a new living room TV this year at Christmas time anyway, and they're begging their parents like, oh, we need one with HDMI 2.1 so I can get the most out of my games. Um, and the parents just go to Walmart. They get the cheapest TV that says it can do HDMI 2.1, but no, oh, it can't. No. Maybe the panel is only 60 hertz. The port doesn't even support oh, you know, 4K no. 60. It only supports like 18 gigabit uh, bandwidth, um, gigabit per second bandwidth or something. Man. And that's where this is going to burn people. Oh, yeah. And it's just such a, it's such a silly thing. Why retire an old number? just to try and it seems dirty just to try and sell more things that... yeah i mean it, it's it, it's definitely something that is very dirty and doesn't feel right but they're getting away with it because mm -hmm. they can just slap their sticker on or on it since 2.0 doesn't even exist and they could just slap it on and say yep. it does 2.1 but it doesn't and no there's, <sighs> there's some weird like new protocol it has to meet like i can't remember what the feature is it's in the article but uh, it was it's something with like the color settings, um, Got it. or like, but but the bandwidth is so much smaller that it can't it can't actually transfer transmit um, as much data. Um, so which is why it can't handle the higher resolutions at higher frame rates and, and such. 
So it's it's kind of annoying that they're allowing this to happen. But the but the other smaller topic here huh. I wanted to get into quick, and this is just more exciting because as I was talking about earlier in the stream, I I enjoy watching Doc, uh, Doctor Disrespect, the two time, back to back blockbuster video game champion 1993 oh, yeah. 1994 back to back, back, to back. six foot seven 38 speed. vertical leap momentum <laughs> yeah um so he big announcement baby to announce he's starting oh, yes. his own game development company and it is Midnight named... Societies. I stole it there from it you. No, I'm no, sorry. no. I was, I was gonna. I stole it from yeah, you. I was gonna I, give I you just... the finger guns. I wanted. I you. like, I like the tingle on my tongue when I say the name Midnight <laughs> Society. That's. I, I feel bad. Like when so you look it suits up. him. I feel bad when you look it up. There's like an indie rock band that's named Midnight Society. It's just gonna. Is like, there really? Never oh, be no. found now. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're already they're already gone. They yeah, don't exist anymore. Yeah, that was because I searched it like the, it's too late before he made the announcement because you could get into the Discord and Discord was called Midnight Society. So I searched the name and it was just stuff about this indie rock band. And now that like his oh, website went no. live, they're just gone into oblivion. Like, oh no, <laughs> um, uh, feels bad, man. It does, but no, feels it's bad. it's pretty cool. And I don't know if you've looked into it too much. Uh, is there anything exciting there? You you think there's something to look forward to? Hey, man. So th the team he surrounded himself with. I mean, come on. You can't. I mean, we all know Doc's got a lot of experience in game development and and he never flexes making it. games all the time because that's what he does. <laughs> We know he plays video games and he yells at him all the time, but he surrounded himself with a team, man. You got Robert Bowling, yep, uh, who comes from Infinity Ward. So he's he's now there. He was a former creative strategist and community community manager. You got Quinn. I'm gonna butcher these names, so deal deal with it. I'm sorry. Apologies uh, if they happen to watch this podcast. I'm so sorry. Uh, Quinn Del Hoyo. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the lead sandbox designer for 343. Like, so you got one guy from Infinity, one guy from 343, and then he, you know, he's got Summit Gupta, who's the CEO, uh, Robert and Quinn both being like the co, uh, the, the co founders, I guess you could yeah. call them. Um, well, and, and as well as Doc himself being. Yeah, co founder. What is what is his title next to co founder? What is it? What oh, it say? oh man, I, I gotta know, scroll. You got, you're making you me so, scroll down here. Well, you got so excited about it before the show when you were reading on it. the bottom. Like, they say, you know, the, this is so and so's name and this is their title, you know. So, you got a few of the names I mentioned. You got Robert Bowling, co founder, studio head, Quinn Del Hoyo, co founder, creative director, Summit Gupta, CEO, co founder, under Dr. Disrespect co-founder and of course six foot eight inch visionary <laughs> it just has to be something subtle but it's yeah. so funny man yeah, like come on he's gotta he's gotta flex it that's oh, what he does geez. I mean, he's, he's gotta he does, flex he does have video game development experience he um he designed yeah he does actually. a bunch of the maps for i think it was cod advanced warfare and, and i a think so of the other ones he worked on as well yeah so he does I mean, he always have mentions it. gaming experience. Oh yeah, he flexes it all the time. Yes, he, he, he flexes all everything. Um, that's his character. But I'm excited to see what this company can do, what he can do with the company, because there is a little bit of uh, a stagnancy in, if that's a real word, I think it's a real word, a uh, stagnancy in gaming and, and what is coming to the market. And I think this again loops back to the first topic we talked about, where every game developer especially at least with the multiplayer online experiences are trying to target that exact same super fast cash cow money maker oh yeah um what are all the streamers going to advertise for us really good on what it, what is going to blow up as an esport and then what can we sell a million freaking cosmetics in um and he just wants to bring a straight up gaming experience to the market something big something that's gonna genuinely captivate the people who do miss those insane battlefield uh or insane call of duty 
moments where it just doesn't feel like the same rinse and repeat year after year with a little less effort put in and a little more cash grab added. He wants a, yeah. a truly um, next level uh, experience. So uh, here, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing with our uh, generation, I guess you can call it, and the generation below. I guess my like the the millennials and then. <laughs> What, what below us we got like gen z and then below yeah. that it's like something else yep the thing the thing with i mean not so much us but more below us short attention spans man if oh, yeah. the game comes out and there's one thing wrong with it <clears throat> cyberpunk one example yep you're gonna get annihilated and nobody's ever gonna play your game ever again and then yeah people just move on people move on yeah. really fast i mean tiktok is the perfect example of this short form content const, constant you just swipe up constant scrolling and, man and the the name itself uh tiktok you just lose track of time you don't know what you've yeah. watched after an hour you've scrolled through so many things it's it's just time flies all this short form content it's almost like you're being brainwashed and it's just hitting your endorphins and you're just yeah excited you're like oh my god this is great this is fun i'm loving this and that's where um gaming has tried to kind of go too is every time you finish a map or finish a game there's got to be all these like loading bars and just boom look at this unlock boom look at this unlock wow yeah. it's it's like they're always trying to keep your attention uh there, there's a industry that's done this for ages now and it's gambling if you go to a casino that's what the slot machines are it's just freaking shiny lights every time you it pull, makes so much lever, sense you can lose money on it and it's it still like so much flashing sense. in your face, like you did it, and it's yeah. like you just lost twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I did wow, it. big lights, big light. Yeah, yeah. you lost two hundred dollars. <laughs> Stuff like what? that. So it, it's just again, it's just <laughs> oh highlighting God. back to the same thing of hitting those quick yeah. dopamine releases. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So hopefully uh, you can bring it's... something different to the table that yeah, I mean, also holds people's attention. Yeah, Call of Duty is realizing they can't just spit out, copy paste the same game over and over again. Maybe throw a new map in there and and call it that. You know, people are yeah. getting sick of it, and people are moving over to games. You know, mm -hmm. you got Nick Merckx who doesn't even play Call of Duty anymore. It's going like, pro he, and he Apex. Just, he's going pro and Apex because yeah. it's Apex. That was the game I played all the time. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was a good game. Yeah, but, it's solid. I mean, yeah. So. I think the bar is going to be set high for him. So hopefully they can perform and hopefully they can, uh, from what I've heard, the, the audio is supposed to be top notch. I don't know about you, but well, so the... that's the first thing he calls out in any game is bad audio. <laughs> so, so it's, that's the meme, baby. It's going to be a meme. He already on his stream yeah. uh, yesterday, he was already making yeah. jokes like, yeah, I've already fired two audio design engineers. Yeah, uh, like, uh, I, just, I think I've seen it on Tim's stream, <laughs> on Tim the Time Man's stream, and he's like, man, did you guys hear that uh, Doc's going to have some insane audio on in his new game? <laughs> yeah. So, so well, that'll be, that'll be big. Set, I, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what they can do um, and the changes they can bring to the industry. So, yeah, yeah. Big, big big moves for that. Uh, good luck to the two-time, and, and good job on getting a solid team together. It'd be exciting to see what happens and how quick they can get it out, you know? Like yeah. Now that, they, now that they've announced, you know, what, when, when think, are they releasing the game? I think it's still going to be a, a hot minute. It's still going to be a while. Oh but yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. excited to see whenever, whenever they do, just take their yep. time with it, get it right and then get it out. Don't, don't I, rush. I anything. think that's, I think that's the most important thing now is yep. don't, I, I know you like a lot of, a lot of these companies feel the need to respond to like, mm -hmm. Hey, when are you releasing your game? When are you releasing your game? When are you releasing your game? But don't prioritize pushing it out too soon for the game to just not be good on release. Exactly. I think it's it, all I ask. Well, and so much of that is pushed um, by the investors. I oh, think, I'm yeah. I think luckily, I'm, yeah. I'm sure he has investors, investors for sure. but luckily, I think he's probably one of the. I, I think him and the other co-founders listed there are probably the biggest investors in the game. So the only pressure they're really going to have on them is from themselves. Uh, and... I think Rob, I think Robert Bowling or one of, one of the guys, maybe it's Quinn Delhoy. One of them has, uh, is like an angel investor for G2. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I so... can't remember which one it is, but so yeah, yeah. they, I mean, these guys, have, they got big, big money. They've got, they got big money. money and they want to make a good game here and they have the money to invest in that. 
which means they have the the time as well um, that they they're willing to take because that they, they've all stated that um, well Doc stated it for all of them is that they're in no rush to put this out they're gonna put it right. out when it's ready they're gonna constantly engage the community if you join that discord I don't know if you join the Midnight Society discord um, is he's gonna have play tests in there down the road constantly be um, engaging with the community in there and figuring out what next steps the community would like to see because that that was one of the things he talked about is he doesn't want it to be just trapped in this bubble where it's being developed by you know a handful of people yeah he wants to get the community that's going to be playing the game involved he wants to know what they want to see change during these play tests pre pre alpha um so that they I can mean, bring the best product to market. Yeah. So, I mean, like going back to, you know, I play TFT. But, you know, there's obviously they have like a couple handful of devs. And, man, do they listen to like uh, they put out like biweekly patches mm-hmm. and, you know, to obviously adjust a few comps. And if they're too strong. They adjust a few things and then push it out or whatever. Uh, and then they put it on their PBE so people can play test it. Yep. So they have play testers and then they'll adjust a few things and then they'll put it out. But man, do they listen to the community. And that just feels good when a, a, a developer or a company is is listening to what the people are saying. You know, I think Riot in general seems to do a good good job with that across all of their games. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is is respond to, to criticism and feedback pretty well. For sure. For sure. So hopefully hopefully they uh they they stay on top of that and release a good game. I'm excited for the future for them. Same, big time. Um, well, I think honestly, I think that's gonna do it here. Do you have any uh, closing thoughts on any of the topics tonight? Or well, actually, before we finish up, how was how was the rest of your beer? Oh, I'm still going, but it's it's fantastic. It's a oh, yeah. it's a gr- great beer. Perfect. Probably it's got to be up there. It's like probably in my top 10. I'm more I like the Citra hops, so mm-hmm. this is this is a good one to go back to. Uh, I'm looking for something strong, this is the one. I think other half in general really knows what they're doing when it comes to their IPAs especially. I for sure. I, I love trying all of their IPAs. And for sure. yeah. I, I agree with that. Mine was I mean, mine Yeah, how's yours? The super sour. easy to drink. It's almost gone. Yeah, it was pretty it's, nice. It's, it's I was going to say that a sour beer. It Honestly, just kind of like you're drinking a carbonated juice almost. It's so good. Oh, nice. It's so smooth. It's ours, man. That's but. the that's the fab from the past, you know, the past couple of years to now. Yep. Oh, it is. And it's one of the things I like about it is because it's it's not like a new age sour. Um, oh, nice. It's it it's still like you're drinking a beer. Um, you can tell it was aged correctly to get to get the flavors it has, rather than just using a bunch of additives. Uh, before and after the brewing process. So, I, I yeah, these are the types, like, I really enjoy these sours, the older style style sours, or, like, B- Berliner Weiss beers, as nice. this one is. Yeah. Um, so, having a good time drinking this one and uh, hanging out here on the show, but I think that's nice. going to yeah. I think that's gonna be it for us. I don't know if anyone in chat is still hanging out, if they have any questions, but it looks like we're all set, so... That's gonna be it, I think, for uh, for episode four here. Um, anything, like I said, anything? Last thing you wanted to say, Plopper? Are you good? I'm good, man. I'm out of here. Good All right. talking. I just need you to quick plug your your social media real quick. Let everyone know. Oh where yeah, to find you can catch catch me streaming if you're interested in TFT. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Ploppo4. I stream uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. EST. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter, itz plop. Um, and then TikTok, uh, Plop04 as well. I, I make some funny content on there. Yeah, his uh, TikTok's been blown up, stuff. guys. It's been blown Something up. like that. We got it. We hit a thousand followers, so Hell yeah, I can go. Stream. I can go live. I can go live on TikTok now. Yup. But, so uh, but yeah, go check him out, guys. Uh, he'll be back here again in a few weeks, and let's keep this train rolling. Keep these live episodes going. Hopefully less scuffs in the future yo chim you have a good night as well my friend yeah thanks chim thanks chim for coming through <laughs> yeah, appreciate yeah, it thanks for coming by hanging out and everybody i'll see you guys in oh, the follow next hit that follow button oh, smack that yeah. follow button mike's Subscribe, nerd cave like all the stuff but um like the video <laughs> anyway yeah uh we'll be back i said not next week but the 
30th will be the next episode. So come in, uh, check it out, and have a drink with us. Have a good time. And we'll see you guys then. Peace.